In today's show, Ben Keyes chats about his first season in the Tricolours. It's not, not something that I haven't sort of been through before with a, a team that's sort of transitioning and blooding new, new players. So, um, yeah, I've, I've found enjoyment in that. Find out how technology is keeping fans connected and take a look at the new development in Westlakes. Hello everyone and welcome to the Optus Crows Show. I'm Mark Bickley. While it's been a difficult year for the club on the field, there has been a lot to like about the new recruits. And one of these is Ben Keyes, who was drafted from Brisbane as a rookie late last year. The 23-year-old has played in every game since his debut in round two, cementing a spot in the side's midfield, thanks to some standout performances. Let's find out how Ben has settled in at the club. Keyes to give them a chance to get another, and he drives it long, and he has delivered on cue. It's not, not something that I haven't sort of been through before with a, a team that's sort of transitioning and blooding new, new players. So, um, yeah, I've, I've found enjoyment in that. It's been a challenging year, um, but I think I've yeah, come out at the other side and, and found some real uh, positives in, in the season. And just having, having some, some, some faith put in me by the coaches to, to play me um, a few games in a row, and I felt like I've started to um, you know, read the game a bit better and start to get a bit more confidence. He's had a fantastic year. I mean, from a fitting in point of view, I think he's been a really important part of what we've been about. Um, you know, our, our game plan, our philosophy of the way we play is about seeking the contest, and there's not many better than Ben Keyes. Slide to Keyes, and they get the opener. And the pressure builds. I've always been someone that's yeah put put the put the yards in and put the work in and um, it's the hard, the hardest time to do that is when you're not getting rewarded it can be pretty easy to to drop off and and you know sulk a bit but I always want to contribute um, when, when the game's on the line you know I always want to be one of the guys that's trying to um, trying to do his best work when, when the game's there to be won and um, and try and try and push the boys over he's an ultimate team player he uh, we give him a number of roles week in week out you know he can play uh, you know the game straight straight up and down as a, a regular mid uh, he can play on a wing um, and get up and down the ground really well for us um, but if you know if there is a time where we need a job done um, he'll put his hand up and you know he embraces that and looks forward to it and keys just a pass to give him something right to go on with he's played well and above uh, our expectations um, so we we couldn't be more with, more pleased with what he's brought and I, I think I've still got so much improvement to go. I feel like I'm only now just sort of um, getting the feel of AFL footy. So um, when you look at it like that, it just means there's so much more sort of growing I think I've got to do and growing into a better player. Let's go, boys. These days, fans are more connected with their favourite team than ever before. Thanks to technology, it's hard to miss anything that's being caught on camera, whether it's during a live broadcast, a news bulletin, or even behind the four walls at the footy club. We investigated how the media landscape has changed in the past decade and where it's heading in the future. When I first began, Occasionally you'd see someone floating around with the camera to take a few photos, but that would happen pretty rarely and apart from that, um, you know, you'd have your, your usual sort of press conferences once a week or twice a week and, and that was pretty much it. Brian, let's... Oh, Brian. Oh, let Where is Brian? Oh, Brian. Very, very noisy in here. Everything's different and most of it's for the better. With the access to so much information and available to everyone, people who work in the trade have had to work harder. and. Organisations like the Crows, like the AFL, they try and control their news a little bit. So they have their own media departments and they want to release what they release. So in every sense of the word, it's changed. But when it comes to the big stuff, people still come to television. The Tigers are premiers for the 12th time in their history. People want to see what, what goes on behind the scenes. So, you know, as a club, I think it's really good to be able to give that access to, to your fans. And I think it's, it's a really good landscape now to be able to open it up your doors and, and give an insight into what goes on without obviously giving away too much. And I think clubs are really good at um, finding the right balance. Bringing some news and experience. You prefer the first one? Yep. yep. Oh, I just think you not know, dominate and soon yep. about. Quite often, access will be dominated by a coach. The bits that have developed over the last few years where 
coaches and players can talk before a game, uh, quarter time, half time. That's unbelievable. They've got numbers here, Adelaide. Sloan's going to walk in, and there's the first goal of the showdown. The next new idea, it won't be something that blows your head off. It'll be something that starts small and becomes the norm. And you'll be asking that question in 20 years time about something that happened 20 years ago. Stay tuned because there's plenty more to come on the show. After the break, we'll get an update on the Crows facilities at Westlakes. to the Optus Crow Show, I'm Alana Smith. It's hard to believe there hasn't been an AFL game held at Football Park for eight years. And if you've driven around the West Lakes recently, there's a chance you wouldn't recognise the once iconic ground. The site is being redeveloped into a brand new housing and shopping precinct. But despite the construction, the Oval still remains home to the Crows headquarters. There's been a lot going on here over the last you know, couple of years since Sample sold the site to commercial in general. Obviously we've got residential housing you know, up now, with you know, people have been living here for several months. There's still obviously residential and commercial construction taking place. Um, the establishment of new you know, roads and entries and exits uh, to, you know, to the facility. So look, it's, it's busy and it's ever changing. I'm sure people recognise that when they come down for a visit. Although on the outside, you know, it's a construction site, you know, inside the footy club, we've still got world-class facilities, uh, whether it's our indoor training centre, gymnasium, uh, the medical services that we provide our players. Uh, we've obviously expanded uh, services to, to look after our AFLW you know, team as well. So you know, they're accommodated in here with their change rooms and, and access to all the facilities you know, as well. And look, the, the, uh, the surface on Footy Park you know, is still world-class. So, um, you know, those things are great, you know, albeit now with the, the, uh, the stadiums being taken down, on windy days it can get pretty tough for the players with some of the, um, you know, some of the construction taking place around them, but, but they're adapting and dealing with that. Once the work immediately around the Oval is complete, one of the upsides for fans is they'll be able to come down and you know, watch the team train. So you know, we're looking forward to, to that part of the work being complete and, and ultimately you know, the development of a, a really great place for you know, people who are a part of the new you know, West community here to you know, interact with the football club on a daily basis. the official Crows news, make sure you visit afc.com.au. Stay connected with the club via their social media accounts on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and make sure you're following at the Crows show on Twitter so you don't miss out on any of our stories from inside the club. Well, Crows veteran Brodie Smith has always been known as the lovable larrikin at Westlakes. But when Ned McHenry joined the club a few years ago, he was determined to outdo Smithers with his infectious sense of humour. Thanks to Bendigo Bank, we've reached into the Crow Show vault to revisit this chat between the two pranksters. This week we've got Ned McHenry. Let's find out how much I know about Ned. Welcome, mate. Thanks, Smitty. Good to be here. <laughs> uh, I've got a question for you, mate. I hope so. Uh, um, <laughs> so got a few. Yep, got a few. Uh, first one is, what colour is my car, Smitty? Blue. Yes, mate. Yeah. It is. I yeah. saw it when I scared the crap out of you down, yeah. down the side street. Yeah, the that's, that's not very nice, mate. <laughs> Looking around. <laughs> Another question for you. Another question. All right. <laughs> Smitty, what is the species... Um, not including sharks, of the biggest fish I've ever caught in length, not kilos. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not a fisherman, so I'm not great with this. Um, it's like a snapper or... <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, a kingfish. Let's get more into the pleasure kind of species. Let's, let's talk marlin. Let's talk marlin sawfish kind of stuff. Okay, yep, yeah, marlin. Marlin, yes, mate. <laughs> well done, mate. Spot on. Well done. How long was it? Uh, I actually don't know. It's just the biggest one. <laughs> 
Hang on. <laughs> I've got one for you, Smitty. Here's a question for you. Yeah, I can't wait. When I retire, do I want to live on A, a <laughs> suburban house, B, an apartment in the city, or C, a farm? <laughs> a farm. <laughs> yes, mate, C. <laughs> Great a enthusiasm. Farm. I'll turn the tables. Can I ask you about your tattoo? Can you tell us about your tattoo? I've got two tattoos. Okay, can you tell us about the spirit animal? Alpaca is my spirit animal. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Thought I'd just put it on me for life. Very what? social animal. Yeah. Protective. They protect their head at all costs. And um, yeah, I just like to nip around and get around everyone, so. Well, thanks for joining us, mate. Thanks, Pete. Thanks for having me, mate. <laughs> Coming up, we get an update from the world of eSports. They've uh, won 17 games and, and lost four and recently won the, the grand final, which will see them now travel to China and play in the World Championships for League of Legends. The Crows purchased the Legacy Esports organisation in 2017 and recently they celebrated winning back-to-back -back OPL championships following yet another grand final win. This means that the League of Legends team is now off to China to compete in the World Championships. We spoke to the club's Chief Operating Officer Nigel Smart to find out more about this exciting achievement. Well, Legacy has a League of Legends team, it's based in Sydney. Um, they're housed in Sydney and they've won 17 games and, and lost four and recently won the, the grand final which will see them now travel to China and play in the World Championships for League of Legends. Back to back champions split one and two, Legacy are the team going to Worlds. It's a bit surreal with COVID because you've got 24 teams around the world uh, from Europe, from South America, from the US. The best teams have uh, obviously won their grand finals in their regional areas. We represent Oceania, which is Australia and New Zealand. The teams will fly in and obviously they're, they're getting COVID tested before and within the bubble they've got 14 days isolation and then they'll compete. Usually there's an event with a crowd, but this year there's no event with no crowds and they're doing it all online, but in a hotel environment that they can manage and control in a bubble and then they'll come back to Australia and have another 14 days of isolation so out of six or seven weeks the guys are spending a good month in uh, in isolation uh, it's like yin and yang at the moment with our AFL squad um, having a, a really challenging year trying to scrape a win. For Legacy, we're probably on the other side where we've got an experienced team, an experienced coach, and they want to perform on the world stage as well. So we're using that to kind of support that team and support it with a range of really good partners. And Worlds is watched by millions and millions of people. Um, and certainly if we can get the uh, Australian audience behind us, so uh, we might have a, a good shot. This week, the Crows have been preparing to take on Carlton in their first interstate game in four weeks. Thanks to Flight Centre, let's fly around social media to see what the players have been sharing with the fans. to a story on local footy and this year Woodville South entered their first female side into the open women's competition. It was an historic moment for the organisation who are one of the oldest clubs in the state's amateur football league. The Crows major partner Toyota has thrown their support behind the team by providing brand new uniforms for every player. Let's see how Toyota's good for footy initiative has helped these girls play footy with confidence. 
My name is Mozzie and I play for Woodville South Women's inaugural team for 2020. To me the footy club means a whole lot of different things. You know it was a chance for the women of you know our community to get together and start a team of you know with in a sport that doesn't generally or hasn't in the past been very affiliated with women. My name is Rennie Schlink and I play for the senior women's football team. To me this football club has meant a lot because I've welcomed a new football team and it just is a vibe for everyone to come together. My name's Ella Vitucci and I play in the A grade women's team for Woodville South. Just can be times where, you know, women can just have a little bit less, um, you know, like footies or Guernseys or uniform. It's been fantastic this year to play in some Guernseys from Toyota's Good For Footy gear initiative. At the start of the season we had a trial game and we were wearing men's Guernseys and it just wasn't right for the women and a lot of them, you know, didn't feel comfortable but being able to get our new set of Guernseys uh, made for women and for the inaugural year this year has been fantastic. We love all the support we can get in women's footy and having such a big um, name come out and support us is just amazing. We feel really supported. It's a whole new feeling, like you, felt, you feel accepted, you feel accepted in the sport, you feel accepted in doing something different. For a team that hasn't played together and for a team that has some of the girls haven't played before, it really brought us together and made us feel, you know, connected and we felt like we were one together with the team and with the club. I couldn't be any more prouder than my girls and the coach is really proud for an inaugural team. Um, the club, the boys, the community is right behind us. Absolutely love it. And coming into the prelim final as an inaugural team, you can't get much better than that. After the break, we'll hear from Crows coach Matthew Nix. back of their first win for this season the Crows faced the Giants last Tuesday night. Thanks to Optus let's take a look at what supporters shared on social media during the match. Fans watching from the comfort of their own home were dressed appropriately for the back-to-back -back win. While those at the ground were keen to join the on-field celebrations. Plenty of pride was expressed by the Crows family. And one well-known supporter just couldn't contain his excitement. Two in a row! Two in a row! You'll be okay! Well, each week on the program, we ask senior coach Matthew Nix a question, thanks to Thomas Farms. This week, we want to know how he approaches a game day. Yeah, game day, I, I like nerves. I think nerves are a good sign that you're switched on, that your mind's ready to go. Uh, yeah, so from a coaching point of view, probably not as many as I had um, as a player, but I, uh, I like to encourage um, players embracing their nerves. I think it's a sign that a player's ready to go. Well, that's about all from us today. Thanks for your company. Do remember, you can keep up to date with all the latest Crows news at afc.com.au and by following the club on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Do make sure you stay tuned to Channel 7 to watch the Crows take on Carlton at Metricon Stadium and we look forward to seeing you again next week. It's bye for now.